In late 2019, the world's steepest roller coaster opened at Nickelodeon Universe in the American Dream Mall in New Jersey. TMNT Shell Razor is a near clone of Takabisha at Fuji-Q Highland, but it's a half a degree steeper on the drop. Now, I waited over a year to finally ride this record-breaking coaster, but did it live up to the hype? Let's find out. Now, first things first, let's walk everyone through the layout for those who are unfamiliar. Now you board your eight-seater, two-row trains, and you put down your over-the-shoulder restraints, which are fine, nothing special. After a left-hand turn out of the station, the trains take a sharp dip that provides some pretty quick airtime, but it's pretty nice. And then it enters a right turnaround and a slow heartline roll. Now, this roll offers some really great sustained hang time before sliding you back upright, down another dip, and into the rolling launch. Now this launch is great. It hits really hard and you feel every bit of it. I found little to no shake at all during my rides and it's one of the ride's true standout elements. The launch really throws you into three back-to-back -back inversions. Now those inversions are a massive corkscrew, a banana roll, and another smaller corkscrew. The first corkscrew really scrapes the ceiling and gives some nice hang time. The banana roll feels very different than most inversions, very different than any other inversion on the ride and it's another favorite element for me. In the final corkscrew, it's nothing special, but it's still a lot of fun. After exiting that final corkscrew, the ride vehicle twists over a twisted airtime hill, and it pops back into a set of brakes. Now, to be honest, I don't remember too much airtime on either of those, but it could be I was more focused on the previous three inversions. Now, after the brakes, you slide around and start to climb the vertical lift. Once at the top, there is a extremely long holding brake that gives a long look at the New York City skyline. Now after those brakes finally release, the train crawls over the drop and you're pulled over a 121 and a half degree drop and you get some really great air time as you descend 141 feet. Now after that drop you experience three more inversions, a dive loop, an inverted top hat, and finally an in moment before popping into the brakes. Of these three inversions, none are really too noteworthy, although I probably enjoy the inverted top hat the most out of all three. So that's the ride, so let's get to my opinions. Now, let me get the negative ones out of the way first. This ride has some major potholes. Mainly after the first drop, your head really rattles around pretty good, and it caused a headache for me after my second ride. Now, the rest of the ride is not really butter smooth either, so it isn't very easy to marathon this at all. Next, this isn't really bad so much as a bit odd and noticeable, but this ride has a ton of sway. I don't know if this is only because it's inside and you can tell because of the ceiling and when you're on the lift hill, but the lift tower and the first course screw especially visibly move every time a train goes by. Also, the holding brake up top is definitely too long. It's a solid 7 seconds, which really kills the mood and the pacing to be honest. And I feel like because of this, the ride does suffer some weird pacing feelings for me. The mid-course lift make the ride feel like two separate rides, which isn't necessarily bad, but I think I would prefer the lift first and then the launch to follow it up, so there's not as much of a gap in between. But it's not really a bad thing, and plus it was a clone layout, so. All right, enough negative. Let's talk about the great parts of this ride, mainly the three real standout elements. You have the launch, the banana roll, and the drop. Now, the launch isn't even the strongest in the park, but it's definitely one of the best I've experienced for its force and its smoothness. Now I have to say it's probably the smoothest part of the ride. Next up is the banana roll, which is really totally different than every other inversion on this ride. The others kind of blend together in my mind when thinking about riding this, but this one really stands out and it's pretty rare too. It only exists on four coasters. Now it gives some pretty good whip around the top and everyone else who rode this with me said it really stood out to them too. Finally, the drop is fantastic, as you would expect from the world's steepest roller coaster. Now, it isn't my favorite drop, simply because it kind of lacks the length. I feel like a strong hyper drop is better, because it's so much more sustained. But it does make me want to experience rides like Cannibal Lagoon that much more. But overall, it's a great drop for sure, and the worst part is just having that pothole at the bottom, because it completely kills that feeling of pulling out of that drop. The other biggest plus for this ride is the hang time throughout. Most of these inversions are taken at a relatively mild pace once reaching the top, and some are pretty high off the ground, especially that early corkscrew and maybe that inverted top hat. Now I usually prefer air time, but it's a pretty nice mix up and the hang time is great. 
To summarize how I feel about this ride overall, I think it's best to look at where I drop it on my list. Now I put this at about 20, which is just below Griffin at Busch Gardens and just above The Incredible Hulk at Islands of Adventure. Now I think if you didn't have to deal with some of the potholes and maybe you switched the pacing up a little bit, it could easily move up to 15. I really think this ride is great, but it's definitely a step down from being elite. Now I can easily see it being someone else's favorite coaster or top rides depending on how much you can handle the roughness or just prefer hang time over other forces. Now I find out a ride of amazing highs that are just ruined by a small bit of really bad spots. So that's going to wrap up this review. Next time we'll dive into my overall experience and opinions of Nickelodeon Universe as a whole and look at the other coasters in the park. Now, as always, follow Island Coasters on Instagram for daily content and video updates. If you really want to support the channel, drop a like and subscribe. All the support really means a lot. So till next time, that's all from the shores of Island Coasters.